Thank you, you too. It's been awful friendly now that he knows he's being broadcasted. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, guys, I cannot find Tim Hortons. I'm going back up there to the convoy. But there's your budget truck. There's the budget truck we've been telling you about. Remember the false flag we were discussing in the morning? What the fuck do you see cops driving around in budget trucks acting all sketchy with special constable agent uniforms carrying really weird things in really weird ways? That's not normal. As somebody that has been down here and watched Hells Angels own clubs being raided and all kinds of stuff, I can tell you what we just watched there, completely abnormal for any circumstance involving police down here. Like this building, what the hell? The Bank of Montreal, man, like they're sneaking shit in the back door of the Bank of Montreal. It's not a hotel. It's the Bank of Montreal. What would they possibly be sneaking in there? Something's weird going on, man. What's all the buckets? What's that? What's in the buckets? Stuff. Can I help you? Well, I'm just exercising my Second Amendment rights. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. What is that? What's that? What is that, sir? You tell me. Corrosive substance. Toxic information. Toxic explosive corrosive substance. In my hotel. Hmm. If you support the truckers in Ottawa in any capacity, I'm going to assume that you are a fucking Nazi. And that you support the fact that they assaulted workers at a fucking soup kitchen. I'm going to assume that you support them defacing Terry po Fox's uh, statue and pissing on a fucking war memorial. I'm going to assume you don't respect a single fucking person who isn't perfectly fit into your stupid little cis het patriarchal white supremacist bullshit. I'm going to assume that you don't care whether disabled people live or die. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't think you care if anybody who isn't you lives or dies because people are going to die because of this. The roads are blocked off. We are facing, I'm not in Ottawa, but Canada, like it's fucking cold. People are going to freeze. People are being assaulted. People are being screamed at. They're, they're there is a never-ending wall of sound surrounding Ottawa currently. That is psychological warfare. People are going to get hurt. People are going to lose their fucking minds in that situation. So if you support the truckers, I hope you support the people of Ottawa when they lose their shit and fucking retaliate. When they fight back against the literal Nazis holding them hostage currently. If you support the truckers, you're not fucking welcome here. Get fucked. We are here out of love for our families, our communities, and our nation. These past two years, the COVID mandates have divided us. This protest be began because of the federal government's restrictions on trucker freedoms. Our movement has grown in Canada and across the world because common people are tired of the mandates and restrictions in their lives that now seem to be doing more harm than good. As of today, Sweden, Denmark, UK, Norway, Finland, Ireland, and Switzerland have removed all COVID mandates and restrictions. We are therefore calling on all levels of government in Canada to end all COVID mandates and restrictions. We will continue our protest until we see a clear plan for their elimination. Premier Scott Moe of Saskatchewan has taken leadership in Canada in ending restrictions and mandates in that province. Hopefully these words will turn into long-lasting action. So far no one from the federal, federal, provincial or municipal government has spoken directly with us. 
Instead, they are using you, the media, to portray us as racists, misogynists, and even terrorists. As a woman with Métis heritage, a mother and a grandmother, I am offended. The reality is that members of this freedom movement are average, peace-loving, and law-abiding citizens from all walks of life who are fed up with being disrespected and bullied by our government. Let me assure the people of Ottawa that we have no intent to stay one day longer than necessary. Our departure will be based on the Prime Minister doing what is right, ending all mandates and restrictions on our freedoms. We also want to thank the thousands of people who have so generously donated to this protest to GoFundMe. Over the last three days, our accountants and lawyers have been working hard to deal with the legal details. This morning, our lawyers sent GoFundMe all the details that they have asked for. I am confident that GoFundMe now has all the information needed to immediately lift the suspension they put on our campaign. I am hoping to hear from GoFundMe soon so that we can get the money to the truckers and keep our protest for freedom moving forward. There's no amendment that's absolute. There's no amendment that's absolute. There's no amendment that's absolute. As you heard Secretary Austin address just last Friday in his remarks uh, with the chairman here in the briefing room, we remain focused on the evolving situation in Europe and Russia's actions on the Ukrainian border and in Belarus. As the Secretary said, the United States stands shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies. The current situation demands that we reinforce the deterrent and defensive posture on NATO's eastern flank. President Biden has been clear that the United States will respond to the growing threat to Europe's security and stability. Our commitment to NATO, Article 5, and collective defense remains ironclad. As part of this commitment, and to be prepared for a range of contingencies, the United States will soon move additional forces to Romania, Poland, and Germany. I want to be very clear about something. These are not permanent moves. They are moves designed to respond to the current security environment. Moreover, these forces are not going to fight in Ukraine. They are going to ensure the robust defense of our NATO allies. Now, let me lay this out for you in a series of three steps. First, I just want to counteract that. I actually pulled my daughter out of AM Culp because of the fifth grade teacher who lined those students up from whitest to darkest, made them turn around, and the white ones need to apologize to the black ones. Now, do not tell me that it did not happen, okay, in this district. You need to put an end to this. Kids do not see color, and you are segregating them, and you are separating them. This is not okay. Do something or get out of those damn chairs. When it comes to the honesty issue, this board has repeatedly denied an activity that has taken place at A.M. Culp Elementary. Just the last action meeting, we were actually attacked by Dr. G, who referred to Fox News about an event that happened. Fox News didn't tell me that the event happened at A.M. Culp Elementary. The activity I'm talking about is known as a privilege walk. It happened in the courtyard at A.M. Culp Elementary, not once, but four times. A teacher who had a professional courtesy, I won't say her name, lined the students up on the wall, asked them to step forward if their parents were married, step forward if their parents were uh, college educated, step forward if they own a cell phone or an iPhone, step forward if their skin color resembled one of a Band-Aid, step forward if they had an in-ground pool. Now this teacher um, carried out this event, and I know it happened because 
One father told me at the top of my driveway. Four parents told me over the phone. I sat in the driveway and a mother and father told me the story that happened to their daughter last year. And just Thursday, I sat in the living room and listened to the story verbatim, word for word, the same questions. But she also added at one point when she asked about the Band-Aid with a mini megaphone, the teacher told the student to get back on the wall because her parents were from India. That happened. There are no versions of the truth, Mrs. Stoll. You emphatically said that didn't happen five times. It did happen, but yet you still deny that it happened. We have filed the right to know for it. We did it in July. We're still waiting for the results on that because it keeps getting kicked down the can because you know you can run out the clock on the issue. My name is Naya Okami. I am the local werewolf girl. I go, Aah! Hello, TikTok. My name is Naya Okami, and on all levels except physical, I am a wolf.